Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm back with my, I think, week 45 wrap up. I've lost track of my weeks. So something fun happened last Saturday when I typically film. My granddaughter got to come over and have a grandparent day, and that was a lot of fun. She's three months old. And since mom has given me permission to put pictures of her up, here's one for you of her sleeping. I missed baby stage when I married my husband, and so I did not realize that three months old still sleep a lot. <laughs> I was more going, oh, okay, what are, we gonna, what are we gonna do? But it was a lot of fun, and she totally adores my husband. Every time he would walk into a room, she would track him, and then every time he held her, she fell asleep, like, immediately. She just very much relaxed with him. It was really, it was really, really cute to see. And that is my week announcement. I'm still on a glow that, you know, from the grandkid. I know that makes me really old. I am aware of this. Anyways, getting into the book wrap up, I finished one book this week, and that was Red Shirts by John Scalzi. Scalzi's sense of humor typically works for me, and it was working for me in the first part of this book until we got to the plot twist. Everything fell flat after that. I just, I didn't care. I didn't care how they were going to solve it. I, the plot twist kind of ruined, like, the book for me, if that makes sense. Before then, I was kind of curious what's going on, what's happening. And then the plot twist was just like, eh. I'm like, but that has nothing to do with their ship or what, what their, like, the time that they're in. It, yeah, I mentioned in a buddy read group that I'm in that I didn't really care for it. I mean, it kind of disappointed me. And they went and looked at my rating. They're like, you still gave it four stars? I'm like, well, I use Copile and it tends to rate things higher because it makes you look at different elements of the book. And it's not a bad book. I personally am disappointed. And since I don't rate purely on enjoyment anymore, yeah, I, it, it was rated higher than what I would have done in like 2012 when I first joined Goodreads. But now I read it. Not my favorite by him. <laughs> and then I continue to work on Bring Me a Unicorn. This has ended up being like my workbook or my like I'm going around Aaron book. And so I'm just reading a little bit at a time and enjoying it. And because it's nonfiction, it makes it really easy then to pick up and write when I get home. I also picked up The Spare Man by Mary Robinette Kowal, and one of like the terms that made me really interested in it was The Thin Man, which I read the book and I love the movies with William Powell and Myrna Loy, so that really got me interested. And I can see a little bit of the inspiration from that, but it has taken a very different jump. I'm not certain how well I am enjoying this right now. In what's happening, the characters feel very true to themselves. Just not my favorite way to approach problems, if that makes sense. I guess in my science fiction, I'm not so much looking for reality and it feels more realistic. I'm going to continue reading it, give it a little bit longer to see what I am thinking. I guess I didn't tell you what this is about. This is about a couple who are on their honeymoon and a murder happens and the husband gets accused of the murder. And so now the wife is working to solve the murder. And then I have picked up Rosebud by Paul Cornell. And this is where I'm going, maybe I'm just not much in a reading mood this week because this is a very short novella and I've tried to read it over the past four nights and I've fallen asleep three nights reading it and then last night my husband started talking to me, so I couldn't continue reading. But this is another science fiction, like five artificial intelligences, I believe, that are in a ship and they're surveying a section or patrolling a section of space and then an unidentified object comes and now they've gone to investigate it. And I'm not sure it's really jiving with me. I'm already halfway through. I'm going to finish it. And that is my reading wrap up. For my writing wrap-up, work drama and life drama 
meant that I did not write very much this week, only a little bit more. There was some life drama that happened last November, so I was, I'm was i disappointed that drama has interfered again. But at the same time, as I am working on a much bigger story, and I knew that 50,000 words wasn't going to finish it, I, I'm at peace with what I have been able to write, because I know that because I knew that the book itself wasn't going to be finished at the end of the month. And I look at it this way as I am getting further along in writing this story than I normally would. And that's, I guess, all I can hope for, really, with writing. So I decided to take more me time to make sure that I'm okay with everything that's going on and write as I can. We have family plans today, so I'm hoping that after that I can find some nice live streams and get in some words and kind of get back in the groove. I'm not going to be trying to do any massive like word counts, at least not at this point. That is what Thanksgiving is for. And then I have the 30th of November off. And I have done a 6,000 day last day before. So right now it's just about writing and getting things on the page. And the more words I write without killing myself, yeah, the closer I will be to my goal. I have found as I have gotten older that I have learned not to stress as much about some things. For my other media, I have picked up an old TV favorite. I have started watching As Time Goes By and this has Judy Dench in it. I know that the male actor playing across from her is supposed to be pretty famous as well, but I don't remember his name. And the synopsis of this is a man and a woman meet again after 30 years. They were in love as in their young 20s. And then when he got posted to another country in the military, she never got the letter he wrote. So she thought he had never written and he thought she had never replied. And so they ended up going their own ways. And now they're back and realize they are still in love and they're navigating that. And then also navigating just being older are like in their 60s, you know, 70s kind of time period. And it's just really, really sweet. I like it. I'm also a little bit behind on my podcasts. And so I just finished listening to the Writing Excuses one that was talking about bodies and disabilities. The importance of people who have a disability still have a life. Their disability does not define them. Their disability sometimes just puts on conditions of how things work yeah but people with disabilities still have a life and when you're writing a character with disability you need to remember that make sure you do your research on what the disability is and how it actually works and then if you're writing sci-fi like for example this character has a the female character has a disability and she has a technological help for it and so it's not taking away that she has the disability, but just saying in this context, in this world, this is how this help helps her. It's important, again, to do your research and get a sensitivity reader, or more than one sensitivity reader, to make sure that you are doing a good job at portraying this and you're not going to intentionally harm somebody. Speaking of which, of sensitivity readers, I also watched Barrett Laurie's video where he interviewed his sensitivity reader, it was really great to hear how the sensitivity reader approached the topic. And, you know, even then they said that, you know, they reminded Barrett, we're not a monolith, we don't all think the same. It's like, so the advice I'm giving you is going to be general and somebody still might be hurt and you just have to realize that that is a possibility, whether or not that was your intention. And then went on to give him the advice. It was interesting to see how they approach reading something that it could be very triggering or even hurtful. I thought it was a great conversation and just highlights the importance of having sensitivity readers. And that is my weekly wrap-up for this week. It's been a good one. Thank you and have a good day.